Cities A and B are 45 miles apart. Alicia lives in A, Beth in B. Alicia bikes towards B at 18 miles per hour. Leaving at the same time, Beth bikes towards A at 12 miles per hour. How many miles from City A will they be when they meet? So here's Alicia, here's Beth, and they're 45 miles apart. And they'll meet, I don't know where they'll meet, but let's just say here, at that point, that distance is X, and that distance would be 45 minus X. Speed is equal to distance over time or any variation of that formula, formula like D over S is T. They meet when the times are equal. So when the time for Alicia is the same as the time for Beth. That would be D o, DA over SA, the distance and speed for Alicia. And this would be the distance and speed for Beth. The distance I've denoted as X. The speed, I believe, is 18. This distance, 45 minus x, and that speed was 12. So cross multiply, you get 12x is equal to 45 times 18 minus 18x. So that's going to be 30x is equal to 45 times 18. So that looks like 1.5 times 18, so 27 is x. And therefore, the answer is e. The weight of one-third of a large piece of pizza together with three and a half cups of orange slices is the same as three quarters of a large pizza together with a half cup of orange slices. A cup of orange slices weighs a quarter of a pound. What is the weight in pounds of a large pizza? So if you put that uh, question into an equation, it would be P over 3, where P represents the pizza, and 7 over 2 S, where S represents the slices. And then therefore, the other side would be 3 over P, 3 over 4 P, S over 2. Then they've been very nice and told me that S is equal to a quarter. So if S is equal to a quarter, the, the slices, let's put that in. And let's solve for P. So it should be fairly straightforward. So this is going to be P over, let's see here, 3 over 4 P minus P over 3. And this is 7 over 8 minus 1 over 8. So that looks to me like 6 over 8. And this, getting a common denominator, 4, 4, 3, 3, would be 9 minus 5p over 12. And if we cross multiply, we will get 40p is uh, 72. And therefore, p is 72 over 40. Divide top and bottom by 8, and I think you'll get 9 over 5. And 9 over 5 is the same as a. How many positive perfect squares have less than 2, 0, 2, 3 uh, are divisible by 5? So 2, 0, 2, 3 is sort of the square of some number, and we want to be less than that. So let me just take the square root and see what that is approximately. It's approximately 44. So that means all of those have to be less than 44. Now, if it's divisible by 5, it's got to be a multiple of 5. So 5 squared... 10 squared, 15 squared, and so on. So let's see here. 25 squared, 30 squared, 35 squared, 40 squared. And the next one will be 45 squared, but then that falls greater than 44. So this is the only. And they're positive, so we're not going to include the zero or all that negative stuff. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight of them, and therefore the answer would be A. How many digits are there in the base 10 representation of 8 to the 5, 5 to the 10, 15 to the 5? Okay, so let's see here. 8 to the 5, 5 to the 10, 15 to the 5. So this is like 2 to the power of 3 to the 5, 5 to the 10. And then this is like 3 to the power of 5, 5 to the power of 5, right? So let's see here. This is 2 to the power of 15, 5 to the power of 10. 3 to the power of 5, 5 to the power of 10. If I can get some 10s, 10 to the power of something, that'll help me out. And I think I can. If I break this up into 2 to the power of 5 and 2 to the power of 10, then I can combine some of these. This and... Wait, hold on. Did I do this right? Uh, sorry, this should have been a 5. I don't know why I wrote, wrote 10 there. Okay, so let's combine these. This... And this can combine to give 10 to the power of 5. This and this can combine to give 10 to the power of 10. And then 3 to the 5 will put out front. 
So this, 3 to the power of 5 is 243. That becomes 243 times 10 to the power of 15. Aha. So 243 and then 10 to the power of 15 is essentially just 15 zeros. So 15 zeros. There's three digits there. 3 plus 15 is 18. 18 digits all together, and therefore, that would be E. Janet rolls a standard six-sided die four times and keeps a running total of the numbers she rolls. What is the probability that at some point her running total will equal three? So we have roll number one, two, three, and four. Well, there's many rolls, but uh, let's see what we get. On the first roll, um, well, you can ha roll either a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six, right? And we want the running total to be three. So the only option is to roll a three. And the probability of that is just one over six, right? Because there's six possibilities. And the only option that would give you a total of three is the three. Okay, let's move on. Now, on roll number two, we want the running total to be three. So the only option is to have the first roll one and the second roll two or the first roll two and the second roll one. That would give a running total of three. Now, the first, that's two. There's only, so there's, there's two possibilities. Now, the total possibilities is six times six, right? Because you have six choices for the first roll, these guys, and six choices for the second roll. So this is two over 36. Third roll. The third, when you get to the third roll, the only way that you can have a running total of three is if you had a one on the first roll, a one on the second roll, and a one on the third roll. And there's only one way of doing that, but we have six times six times six this time, so six to the power of three is the total. And then on the fourth roll, to get a running total of three is impossible, because even if you had the bare minimum on the first three, you'd already have three, and the bare minimum on the fourth would be f one, and that would be that would be a running total of four. So, the probability is zero, and then zero for everything else. So we got to add up these guys. So one over six plus two over thirty-six plus one over six to the power of three. Is that right? Okay. So thirty-six, thirty-six. Just getting common denominator here. Uh, 6, 6, so there'll be 36 plus 12 plus 1 is 49, and I think that's 216 for 6 to the power of 3. So 49 over 216, and that is B. Points A and B lie on the graph. Y is equal to log of X to the base 2. The midpoint of AB is 6, 2. What is the positive difference between the coordinates of A and B. Let's see if I even remember how to draw the log graph. I think it's something like this. I think. It's been a long time since I've manually drawn log graphs. Okay, so we have no idea where this A and B are, but I can approximate a 6, 2. Uh, let's just put it here. So this is my 6, 2. And they're saying there's two points for which this is the m this is the midpoint. So I, I have no idea. And both of those are on A and B? Okay, so let's just say something like that. So this is my A and this is my B. That's and, and that's pretty close. I, I, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, so let's just call A x1, y1. And B, I'll call x2, y2. Okay, so off we go. So the midpoint would be x1 plus x2 over 2, and x uh, y1 plus y2 over 2, and that would be equal to 6, 2. So that means x1 plus x2 is 12, and y1 plus y2 is 4. Okay, so where do I go from here? Well, y is equal to log of x to the base 2. So this is really the same as the log of x1 to the base 2 plus the log of x2 to the base 2 is 4. So using log rules, you can combine them x1 times x2 to the base 2. And then using log rules again, that would be 2 to the power of 4 is equal to x1 times x2. 
and therefore that 16 is x1 times x2. Okay, so this is pretty good here, pretty good information. What are we trying to figure out, actually? What is the positive difference between the x-coordinate of a and b? So we're trying to figure out x2 minus x1, because we want the positive difference, because x2 is greater than x1. Okay, I think I can do that. That shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to have to do some algebra, though. X1, mi x, plus, x1 plus x2 squared is x1 squared plus 2x1 x2 plus x2 squared. Correct? Well, this is 12 squared, and this would be x1 squared plus x2 squared. And then this guy is 16, so that's going to be 2 times 16, which is 32. So x1 squared plus x2 squared will be 144 minus 32, which I believe is 112. And then finally, we can tackle that guy. x2 minus x1 squared is going to be, if we do that algebra, x2 squared minus 2x1 x2 plus x1 squared. x2 plus x1 squared, that I think is right here. That's 112 minus 2 times x1 x2, which is 16. So 112 minus 32 is 80. And therefore, if we take the square root of both sides, we will get the positive difference and that in a mixed radical is 4 root 5 and therefore that would be D. A digital display shows the current date as an 8 digit integer consisting of a 4 digit year followed by a 2 digit month followed by a 2 digit date within the month. For example Arbor Day this year is displayed at 20230428. For how many dates in 2023 will each digit appear an even number of times in the 8 digit display for that date? So. All the dates are going to have 2023, two, and then we're going to have um, four more slots to fill in. Now, we've got to read the question carefully here. For how many dates in 2023 would each digit appear an even number of times? So let me give one example, and let me explain what they mean. Each digit appears an even number of times. So, for example, the zero appears twice, right? Two times. And two is an even number. So that takes care of the zero. The one appears twice. That is an even number. The two appears twice. Two is an even number. And the three appears twice, and three is an even number. So that's what they mean. It's a little bit not that obvious in my opinion. Maybe it's obvious to you, but I, had to, I actually initially thought they meant the number is even. So this would have to be like a two but that's not obviously what they mean. Okay, so this is one example. We obviously have to come up with others because the answer choice is there's at least five and, as, and, and at most nine. Okay, so let's just do this. You just have to do it manually, I think. So if I put a zero here, let's just exhaust the zeros. If I put a three, I can get a two, two. That'll work. And then I think I can keep going with the zeros in that position. Uh, if I move the three here, then I have to put a one, one. And then if I keep going with the zeros, if I put the 3 here, then I can get, um, can I put a 1, 1? Yeah, I can. Okay. And then keep going. And I think I've exhausted the 1s, but then I can put a 2. And you also have to check out these valid dates, because sometimes you might put a number like 32, uh, but 32 is not a valid date. So, so far, that's 5. Let's see how many more I can get. I've exhausted, I think, the zeros in that position, but now I can try a 1. Then I have 0, 1, 3. And then if I do the 1 again, and then I move the 0 here, I can have a 1 and a 3. And then if I put uh, 1, 0, let's see here, if I put the 1 here, I can put, I think the 0 would go there. That would make an, a 3, 1. I think that would work. And then a 1 and a 1 and a 3, 0. I think that exhausts it. Let me just see if, if all these are valid, actually. Uh, yes, I believe so. October... 31st, yeah, because that's for Halloween. Okay, so that's nine.
Well, there we go. So E is the answer. Maureen is keeping track of the mean of her quiz scores in the semester. If Maureen scores on 11 on the next quiz, her mean will increase by 1. If she scores an 11 on the next three quizzes, her mean will increase by 2. What is the mean of her quiz scores recently? So, for example, let me just give an example here. Let's say, let's say she has three tests and she scored a 6, a 6, and a 6. Then the mean would therefore be 6, right? So the total would be the number of tests times the mean, which in this case is 3 times 6, which is 18. And I'm just trying to see. This is just an example. I'm just trying to understand the question. I think I do. So for the first sentence, it means that the total score plus the 11 divided by this time n is being the total number of tests but then they're adding one more test of that 11 and that is going to increase the mean by one i'm pretty sure that's the algebra for that first part the second part they're saying you take the total score and then you add three tests where each of them she scores 11 and this time it's the initial number of tests plus three additional tests and that increases the mean by two Okay, so that, those are the th two, e two equations. Now we got to solve for, what do we have to solve for? The mean, so we have to eventually find the value for m. Okay, I think I can do that. Let's see here. The first equation, cross multiply nm plus 11 would be nm plus n plus m plus 1. These cancel, therefore n plus m is 10, and therefore n would be 10 minus m. For the second guy, we would have nm plus 33 is nm plus 2n plus 3m plus 6. That cancels with that. 2n, I think, wait, hold on. 2nm, 2n3m, this would be m. And 2n plus 3m is 27. So now we can substitute that for this. So it would be 2 times 10 minus m plus 3m. And would be 27 is 20 minus 2m plus 3m. And therefore, 7 is equal to m. 7 is m, and therefore, the answer is d. A square of area 2 is inscribed in a square of area 3, creating four congruent triangles as shown below. What is the ratio of the shorter leg to the longer leg in the shaded right triangle? label this let's call that y let's call that x and by symmetry that's y and that's x so we are asked to find the ratio essentially of y over x okay using pythagoras and using the fact that these squares are area two and three that means that's root two and that's root two the side length and that's root three and that's root three the side length so that means that x plus y is root three and therefore x plus y squared would be 3. And then if I expand that, it would be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is 9. And then what else? Oh, we're using Pythagoras on this triangle here. You can get x squared plus y squared is equal to 2, root 2 squared, basically. And then if I do x minus y, that will help me, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared because it will allow me to solve for it x minus y squared x squared plus y squared is 2 minus 2xy uh, let's see here uh, did I do everything correctly sorry th this this should be a 3. Sorry about that. I don't know why I wrote a 9. I think I just did it a little bit too fast. Okay, no problem. From here, let me that, write that over here. You're probably wondering the same thing. I think I can solve now. x squared plus y squared is 2, right? So that means that's 2 plus 2xy is equal to 3. So 2xy would be 1, and therefore xy would be a half. Okay, that's very helpful. So I can, that xy is a half. So that means that's 2 minus 1, so that's 1. 
So therefore, if I take the square root, x minus y would be 1. Okay, so that's good. I have got x plus y is root 3, x minus y is 1. Now I can solve for both x and y, and then eventually I can get that uh, ratio. So I'm going to eventually try to find this ratio y over x. Okay, so let's solve x plus y is root 3, x minus y is 1. When I add those, I'll get 2x is equal to root 3 plus 1, and therefore x is equal to root 3 plus 1 over 2. Sub it back into either one of those, x minus 1 would be y, so that means that would be root 3 plus 1 over 2 minus 1, and therefore y is going to be root 3 minus 1 over 2. Okay, now we can get that. So therefore y over x would be root 3 minus 1 over 2 over root 3 plus 1 over 2, and that's root 3 minus 1 over root 3 plus 1. And let's see, oh, the answer choices, I think they had to rationalize the denominator, so let's do that. Root 3 minus 1. You have to multiply top and bottom by the, top and bottom by the conjugate, right? So that's going to be 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1 all over 3 minus 1, so 2. That's going to be 4 divided by 2 is 2 minus root 3. 2 minus root 3, and therefore that is C. Positive real numbers x and y satisfy y to the power of 3 is equal to x squared. y minus x squared is equal to 4, four or y squared. What is x plus y? Okay. Uh, let's concentrate on that guy first. y minus x squared is equal to 4y squared. If I put everything on one side like this, that almost looks like a difference of squares now it does since I factored it you remember the difference of squares whereas a minus b a squared minus b squared is a minus b plus a plus b so it's the same thing here so this would be let's do this be y minus x minus 2y y minus x plus 2y okay great so this would be minus x minus y and this would be 3y minus x. So that means either 3y is equal to x, or it means minus x is equal to y. But both of them are positive, so this is the only valid solution. Okay, so then we can figure this out using that. So since y to the power of 3 is equal to x squared, substitute this guy in, and we will get, what will we get? Uh, y to the power of 3 is equal to 3y all squared. So y to the power of 3 equals 9y squared. Divide through by y squared, and we will get y is equal to 9. If y is 9, uh, therefore x, uh, let's see here. Well, x is equal to 3y, so x would be 3 times 9, which is 27, and therefore x plus y would be 9 plus 27, and that is 36. So the answer is D.